Would you like to see how I created this summer party makeup look on my nearly 70 year old skin? Then please keep watching. Hello, Des here and welcome to my channel and particularly welcome if you're new. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. So let's get started on my summer party makeup look. And we're going to start with foundation and we're going to be using the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation in Patagonia. I really love this. And because this is a summer party makeup, we want our makeup to last. We don't want to look too shiny, but we don't want heavy coverage. We, we want light to medium coverage, which this is. It is quite glowy, but we will powder it down as well. But I think it's quite long lasting. So wouldn't use a skin tint for this. Wouldn't use a medium to full coverage, but we'll use a light medium. And that's what this is. So let's crack on. With the foundation it is a very very warm day today and it was yesterday as well so we're really in full summer now it's a beautiful day for a summer party so really looking forward to partying later on now i have a i'm applying this with a slightly damp sponge it's funny i was in the habit of using a dry sponge but i've gone to slightly damp now and this is just a very cheap sponge from Boots. So I've moistened the sponge with the Beauty Pie setting spray. Now, somebody asked me recently, one of my lovely subscribers, one of my lovely viewers asked me recently what I think of setting sprays. And to be honest, I don't usually use them except to moisten a sponge, but we will use it today. And it's a really good idea to use one, I think, just to set your makeup. Now, well, whether it actually works, it's very difficult for me to know because I never check my makeup unless I'm going to a party or an event of some kind. Once it's on, it's on. I don't bother looking at it until I take it off in the evening. And even then, I don't really pay attention to it unless I'm doing a sort of special foundation check, which, to be honest, I haven't really done for a long time. But let me know in the comments below if you would like me to do that. Now, that is a great coverage, I think, because because it's covered up this blemish a little bit. This is a permanent zit that I have. Actually, I've got a real zit just here. Oh yeah, and it has covered it up actually because I was nearly going to pop it yesterday, but I didn't. I think that's a great coverage because it's not too full and it's not too light, it's just right. Now onto concealer and I'm going to use the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. Now I got this mini, gosh, I can't remember when that was. I think it was last year. And this was on the back of a video by Andrea Ali who said she thought this concealer was really excellent. I don't know. I've never really reviewed or compared one concealer to another unless I've compared a high end to a drugstore. But it is nice and she rates it as a concealer that's good for long wear. So let's apply that and we're going to be very sparing. I'm often very cat candid with concealer and I think as we get older and more lined, we do have to be careful that we don't overdo it. So let's pop tiny dots along here, like so. And then if we want to add more, we can. But we're just going to, I tend to have to use my little fingers, let me come in a bit closer, rather than, rather than my, uh, these fingers, whatever they're called, because I can be more gentle with them like that. Now I know some of you will know who've watched my previous videos that I had a problem with my eye, which weirdly seems to have righted itself. I mean, it is still happening a bit. What happens is the rim of this, left eye turns inwards, sort of involuntarily. Well, you couldn't do it voluntarily, <laughs> could you? Um, but it seems to have died down a lot, which is really good news because I didn't particularly want to have an operation that um, will put me out of action for a little while and cost an arm and a leg as well. So that's good news. Right, I'm not going to put any on my eyelids because we're going to be using liquid eyeshadow. Right, let's have a look and see what we've got. Oh yes, that's very good. Right, I think that's excellent because we haven't gone in too cat candidly. We've got a bit of coverage under the eyes. We've brightened them up a little bit, but not too much. And we are going to set my under eyes with powder now. I love the way I say we, it's like the royal we, isn't it? <laughs> ah, right, um, so we're going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Setting Powder, which I love. Here's the powder and I'm just going to put in this quite new brush that I got very nicely angled from Real Techniques and Boots the other day. 
And we'll just carefully pat that. But let's have a look what I'm doing in the mirror. Carefully pat that in. I think that looks really good on the under eyes because there's not much creasing going on. There's always going to be creasing with my eyes. I just don't see how you can eliminate it on elderly eyes such as mine. But I think that's about as mattifying as we can get. Now, I did say at the outset that we were going to do some powdering here, but I think we'll leave that until a bit later. And we'll go on to do the brows now. So we're going to use the Bomb Brows by Huda Beauty, which I love. And it's got a lovely thin spoolie and it makes it really easy to apply. And as those of you who watched my channel before will know, I'm not a great fan of heavy brows. I mean, as you can see, I haven't got a lot of brow hair anyway. So we're going to be quite light with the brow. So we're going to sort of stroke them almost. Let me come a bit closer. Can you see? So we're applying colour and we'll fluff them up afterwards. So first we're applying colour. So you can see that has darkened them quite considerably, hasn't it, compared to this eye? Sorry, this brow rather. I've got a huge hair stuck on the end there. What's that doing there? Get out of it. Right, um, let's do this one. Actually, do you know what I've tried to do lately when I'm applying um, when I'm applying brow gel is not to go like this, but actually to go like that so I can see what they're going to look like because I don't go around all day with my eyebrows up like this. So it, it sort of helps me to see what they're going to look like when they're resting, as it were. Now, this is the one where I've got a little gap there. So I'm just going to cover that up. I have never had heavy brows. And why One, why I shaved them off one time, I just don't know. I was 16, so, you know, we don't always know what we're doing then, do we? But I can't say it was a cause of me not having heavy brows because I don't think anyone in my family has heavy brows, even though everyone was dark-haired. Well, my immediate family, actually, some of my family are redheads actually some of my cousins are but on my mum's side we were all dark although my granny decided to go a kind of a goldy blonde when she was older but that's never appealed to me really right so there we are we filled them in and then we're going to just fluff them up a bit so actually before I do that I can just wipe any excess off here so we can fluff them right let's fluff away as it were and now i will lift them up actually because it isn't easy to fluff <laughs> easy to fluff what am i on about it isn't easy to fluff when they're not raised so there we go there so i think that's nicely fluffed but not too fluffy as it were and they look quite natural and not too heavy either. So for the eyes, we're going to use the Lisa Eldridge Liquid Lurex Eyeshadows. And I've got two new shades. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply the pinky colour on the eyeshadow. On the eyeshadow. We're going to apply the pinky colour on the eyelid. And then we're going to apply the brown colour here. And we're just going to go slightly above. Now, I always struggle with this because my eyelids are so droopy and there's so much skin there that I can't do the great sort of, I can't do the proper come up here and then go across here in any sort of seamless way because I just don't have the taut skin that's required for that. It really doesn't work. It just all bunches up and looks really So we're not going to do that. We're going to be, or at least we're going to be very, very gentle in our application so I mean it is good to go a bit darker here and above the crease but we're going to have to be really careful how we do it so what we're going to do first is we're going to get our liquid eyeshadow and we're going to get a brush handy as well we're going to have a brush handy I should say and I think what we'll do and what we'll do is we'll apply a tiny bit on the eye like that, look at that beautiful colour, and then working very quickly, take our brush, look at that beautiful colour, oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous, look at that, isn't that gorgeous, now I was thinking the other day, why am I getting into kind of glittery eyeshadows when I haven't really used any of the glittery eyeshadows that I've got in my palettes, 
And I think there is something about liquid eyeshadows rather than shimmers in the palettes, you know, the dry powdery versions as it were. There's something about them. I don't know whether it's because I like applying them better or whether they just look better on mature eyes. I'm just going to pick up a bit more actually just a tad more. There we go. I don't know what it is but anyway maybe one day let me know in the comments below I could do a comparison. Now we're going to apply the darker colour. I've just realised I've applied the wrong colour. I meant to apply the dark one which would fall on the floor so let me go and do that now. Right, I'm going to tidy that up in a minute, but you can see the effect we're going for. This is a darker brown again. I will put all the shades down below for you in the description box. Right, let's do the other side. This one's even droopier, this eye. Very droopy indeed. Yeah, there you can see we're starting to darken it up. I think I've gone a bit darker over here, so let me just match up if I can. Right, we've got the colour on, we're just going to tidy it up a bit. Now the thing about liquid eyeshadows, if you don't blend straight away, they dry quite quickly. But that's not to say you can't tidy them up. And actually I think those two have blended quite well, but we will tidy up right at the end. Right, let's crack on with the eyeliner. And actually before we do that, we're going to line our lower waterline with this, with this nude pencil. Right, so the under eyes are now brightened a bit and now we're going to get our gel pencil. Now, I think with um, I think with liquid eyeshadow, you don't want a lot of pencil. I know I usually like quite a heavy, dark look and I do say that that does make our eyes pop and I, I think, and I stick by that. I think for this look, it's more about the shadows than the pencil. So let's just, so let's just apply the pencil as close to the lashes as we can. I quite like the fact that it's not a strong line. See what I mean? I think that's looking quite good. Right, the next thing we're going to do is get some powder. I know I've got a bit of eyeshadow there and I will sort that out in a minute. But we're just going to do our T-zone. We're going to put some blusher and highlighter on in a sec. There we go. There, we're all back to normal now. Now let's crack on with the... I'll put the mascara on in a mo, but we're first going to use the blusher. Now I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic in Pillow Talk. Now the reason I'm using this is I'm not going to use a bronzer and we're trying to keep it a bit pinky and a bit party-ish. And I really love this blusher because it kind of stands in for a bronzer as well. It's a, bron a bronzer, is that the right word? And I'm going to use this really good angled blush brush from Sephora. And we're just going to... There we go. And then we'll just blend it. And then we're going to put some highlighter on in a sec. Now, I think before we put the highlighter on, we will do the mascara and then we can always tidy up the eyes as well and see if they need any adjustments. I'm going to use the MAC Stack Mascara. It was a toss up between the Lash Clash by YSL and this one, but actually I am really enjoying using this one at the moment. So let's pop that on. This one has a, a rubber brush, but it is quite bristly for a rubber brush if that makes any sense at all. I think the eyes are looking really good but I'd just like to deepen them a little bit so I'm just going to go back in with this very dark or the darkest of the Lisa Eldridge's and I'm just going to put a tiny bit on my little finger because I don't want to do too much messing about. Okay, eyes done. Now we're going to do highlighter. And I'm going to use the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin something or other. All the details will be down below for you in the description box. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to do three or four little dots up here. But also I'm going to get a brush in a sec and just put a tiny bit in the corners of my eyes just to brighten them up even more. 
because it is still hay fever season here. So it does mean that I am still quite runny of eye, which is a pain and runny of nose as well, actually. That's good. Subtle, but pretty, I think. And now let me get a little brush. Actually, do you know what? Now let me actually get a cotton bud, I think. This is my new method, just invented. <laughs> And let me put a tiny bit in the corner of each eye. And now I'll just blend very, very gently. There we are. And finally, we come to lips. Now we're going to outline our lips with the lip cheat in, can't read that, but it's uh, Charlotte Tilbury. I'm just, actually, I'm not gonna outline them. We're gonna, we'll just go over slightly the natural lip line just to make the lips a little bit bigger if we can. And then because we want long lasting lips or long lasting lipsticks even, I'm going to hit the pencil. Oh, I heard it. Got it again, got it again. Ah. And then apply the lipstick on top. In fact, we're gonna probably use in fact, I think we're going to use two lipsticks and a lip gloss. It's going to go a bit bonks. Um, and we're going to use... So first we're going to use the Velvet Beauty by Lisa Eldridge. And I think we will apply it with our fingers. So I'll just take a bit here. Is that Velvet Beauty? Make sure it's the right one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is that Velvet Beauty? Yes, it is. Okay. Very oh, good. A high uh, uh. See, it gives it a sort of softer look, doesn't it, than going straight from the bullet. I just wonder if that's a bit dark, but not to worry because we're going to layer our lipsticks today. I'm going to use on top one of my new favourite brands, lipsticks called Baby, and it's by Merit. And it's just going to lighten it a little bit. And then we're going to get another Merit product, this one. And this is the lip gloss. And we're just going to put a little bit in the centre of our lips right here. Yeah. Now I think we're just going to go back in with a bit of blusher. Because I may have been a little bit too... Um, I may have been a little bit too careful with it and we do want this makeup to stay so I haven't used or I haven't really used any cream products I mean you could and actually my lovely friend on YouTube Tamara does use a cream product followed by uh, topping it with a powder product but we haven't done that today so there you have it that's my summer party makeup I really hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have I'd be so grateful if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment below. Let me know whether you've tried any of these products, particularly the Liquid Lurex by Lisa Eldridge. Did you enjoy using them? Do you think this party makeup is something you'd like to try? I absolutely love making myself up. I may be pushing 70 but I really enjoy it and I hope you do too. And thank you again so much for watching. It means the absolute world to me. I really do appreciate every single one of you. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.